welcome to my acts of achievement. One of the key things, I have amazing ability to work in an improvisational way through uncertain circumstances. <clears throat> that ability has come because I've done my own projects. I initiated them, I directed them, I wrote them, I evaluated them, I went and recruited for them, I invested in them, I went out and got investors. I done my one man show. Basically, it came from me doing a one boy show from young, doing the clothes, everything. I did everything around it, produced it, wrote it, etc. And I, I developed it each year as an individual, and I worked in an improvisational way. Now, one of the key things that's happening in the twenty first century is basically the want people who can be improvisational, creative, who know how to fuse creativity, business, creativity, innovation. They know how to lead, manage, but leadership has changed. So I need to go through this. Leadership changed in 1990 with lifelong learning because it was individuals who didn't have academic knowledge who know how to run a business. They know how to strategically get a project from A to Z. I was one, I'm one of them individuals. I didn't have no qualifications, but I led, led festivals, I led projects. I came because what happened was I had the ability to lead projects, my confidence to lead projects, for example, festivals that I did as individuals. First, I did pilots. And secondly, so I knew every stage of it. Secondly, I did my own festivals. I was involved in festivals myself and I saw it was involved and I was there shadowing people. I never involved in no project yet where I didn't observe every stage of it. So I knew I knew the problems, A to Z, getting funding, etc. Because I got people to invest in me, I got funding because that was the heart of the matter. Or you can't get the right artists. I had artists, but the artists I chose to be in my festivals was people who can deal with uncertainty, who can make things happen who can innovate, so that whole thing why innovations come, <clears throat> sometimes you create something that's not been there till you have a problem and then it comes innovative. So you need people who've had this experience of being in multiple projects, had a lot of challenges, so that's, the prime example would be ER, why ER is great. I saw myself as an artist from a long time ago. I wanted to span the boundaries of my learning dancing more than anybody else, I was always curious. So I studied Bollywood, I studied Hollywood, I studied Pinewood, I studied Nollywood, I studied step dance, I studied ballroom dance, I went to workshops all over the place to learn around, for example, festivals, I went to a lot of Lindy Hop dance festivals, I went to what is called uh, drumming and dance, tribal dance festivals, involved in them myself, I worked with tribal producers who have promoted their own events, I was involved in what is called Afro Blue Beats parties that I put on an individual where artists, black artists, were not having opportunities to display their work in galleries or nothing. We didn't get that opportunity. We didn't care about that. What we did, we created parties and actually decorated the house, yeah, the walls, with our, our photographs, our pictures, photocopies. As individuals, we had, um, we had what is called, what are they called? What are they called? We had film projectors, as part of the party. We had projectors, photographic projectors, as part of the party. So we were creating our own uh, environments of museums within the parties that we created. We didn't have DJs. We as musicians, ourselves as connoisseur record collectors, I used to have a reel-to-reel, Tascam, and put five hours, six hours music so the idea, artists came into the room and music was being played, they danced to it. I just mixed up the music. And people went with what people knew. That was the way. We didn't have DJs. We don't have this thing, we're going to get a DJ to play. We were DJs in our time. And so that type of culture has been missing uh, as individuals. People used to come together and work together with each other all the time. People stayed at your house because I lived in a common on experience. In the 80s, it was massive common experience that started from the 70s and 60s. Yeah, hippie colonies. What happened in the 80s, my brother and me lived together. It was common. We had 25 people in our home. 15 people used to live at our house. We lived at other people's houses. I went to my girlfriend's place. I wasn't into squatting, but Hume was a place where people squatted. Uh, I didn't like squatting at first, but then what happened, because people were doing it, that's what I did as an individual. I had my home. I go back to my home a lot <laughs> to get a shower and you know have electric and food. But people were living in an artistic way. That's why common all experiences came as an individual, especially Rastafari. That's how we were living, eating food together, <clears throat> all these things. That has been lost now. <clears throat> As an individual, but they were the things that I grew up on as an individual, and they led to a lot of improvisational things happening. So people led projects, for example, Hume created his own festivals, his own festivals away from the council. So the Hume Festival. 
<clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And that was powerful. And Hume was a, was a creative hub that basically artists of different backgrounds ended up going there. And the same was in Seven Sisters. Seven Sisters, a lot of artists were there. So what happened was we had our own creative hubs on our doorstep. Manchester was one and a half. Moss Side was one and a half miles away from the town centre. So I was an artist that went into the town centre for dance events, galleries, museums, and came back into Hume, went to all activities that went on in early hours of the morning, uh, an individual in the day, and was in the creative hubs of Old Trafford, as well as an artist and Moss Side. And that all, all that was happening was pure create, cross-cultural experimentation, creativity was happening, and I was one of the key individuals, the mover and shaker of that. So leadership, what happened, I had a wealth of leadership in seeing projects, seeing carnivals. Our carnivals in the north of England, we see more carnivals than the south do because they only have theirs. We saw, we are both at the south carnival, Midlands carnivals and our own carnivals in the north of England. And we went to these and these are big, huge things where you see leadership in action in the creative culture industries and people don't really, really understand that. So what happened was the faith that you have you see, artists, Bob Marley was coming to Manchester 24-7. He was, he was just like a brother to people. He was in our Moss Side precinct. He was at a friend's house. He eating with Bob and the Whalers. And people don't really recognise that because black artists were underground. Do you understand? We, understand, we, we, we saw them 24-7. You have to understand, we are top of the pops in Manchester. So Michael Jackson was like just Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson came here in 72. People need to understand. Um, we had Sweet Sensation, Sweet Sensation 1974 was the first black British group to break America, the way they were from, they were from Manchester. The lead singer, Marcel, used to be at my primary school, so it gave us a vision of what we could do. I seen a dance fair of Harlem, started their tour in Manchester, and they did lecture demonstrations, I went to see them, so the point I'm making, as a thing, I saw a lot of leadership, and leadership changed in 1990 to accept Lifelong leadership. So what happened was it set up a new spectrum for wider participation students to go back into higher education. I was one of them. I went back into higher education in 89 to 90, 91. Because of that, doors opened for people who had massive experience. And what happens is the individual, as my, my development and success was I, I found artists who could work in an improvisational way. You can't work with people who are not improvisational. Because what they're doing, they come with a judgment because they have fear of the unknown. They come with problems. So what happens is when you've got improvisational artists, they have faith that I'm going to do something for your experience to know that you've done things. Yeah. So you know that I'm street smart. You know we're going to get the funding. And I might get the funding, which I, I get borrowed somebody, from body and everybody. That's how it was as an individual. You're not know going to get the money to do what we're doing. And we look, at, we look at different ways we can do it. Now, one of the key things of being a grassroots artist, grassroots leaders are trained to be multi-skilled. So I became an independent instability artist. I was an arts manager, administrator, as well as being a special cultural events manager. So I came with the understanding of how to do a project from beginning, middle and end, every, every aspect, and had done it as an individual, do you understand? And was in the established companies with, within the UK. I co-founded mainstream companies, uh, as an individual, I got knowledge of working with them as individuals. So in these pictures I'm showing you is a prime, in these pictures I'm showing you is a prime examples. <coughs> it, <coughs> what happens is, within these pictures is a prime examples. This is me as basically the co-founder of Juba Jazz Dancers Project as individual Juba Jazz, Juba Jazz Dancers Project, Juba Heartbeat Drummers, and I'm doing lectures I was the first person to create lecture demonstrations because what happened was you can't understand UK jazz dance without lecture demonstrations of film footage, of me doing talks, giving you insight to the culture, the lifestyle, because this art form started from each dancer. You know, it wasn't in a dance studio. So this is a prime example. And I did that in universities. I did that in colleges. I did that in schools. I did it in primary schools. And here's a prime example of me teaching. I'm teaching dance here as an individual but it's all around jazz dance, the development from early learning. So I mean, childhood learning here. And what it is, I recognize as an artist, you can't do my art form unless you're free spirited. And what happened was, I, what happened, you found a lot of young people, especially uh, Caucasian young children, are not free spirited to do my art form because they don't know what it entails. So you have to do exercises 
So what happened, I realised that I did create what I went through, the journey that I went through. In primary school, at this age, I did creative dance. In primary school, I did British and European folk dancing. I did Irish dancing. I did disco dancing. When I went to the Caribbean, I did their cultural dancing as individuals. And I learned a lot about improvisational dancing. I learned a lot about agricultural farming. So I took all these things and brought them into school, realised there's a development of oneself. But remember, we learned free, free expression dancing, freestyle dancing, dancing from our inner spirit, from our parents, because we've seen them growing up. We just mimic what they told us to do. So all these things, when I started to teach, I realised it was a journey to me being free-spirited as a dancer and being free-spirited as a leader of dance. How can I be free-spirited? I became a choreographer, so what it was... From the beginning, I had a development. We need got a piece of music. I create the dance for that music. That's a different type of leadership. Some people can't choreograph. They need to go and get someone else. We never did that. We learned to choreograph. We learned improvisation. Improvisation to choreograph. We go, we explore. Then we devise. And then we create our own steps. So I'm a choreographer. Besides just a...